Hello, my name is Martha, and I'm 19 years old. I want to tell you that I do believe that there are many happy stories about stepmothers. The stories about the kind women who came into the life of a child and took their mother's place. But I didn't get that lucky. My childhood was a nightmare because of my stepmother. And now, for sure, she only wishes me all the worst. So listen, I don't remember my mother. She left my father when I wasn't even three years old. As far as I know, another man was waiting for her, and I was not needed there. My father was a busy person, a top manager in a large corporation. He didn't give me up for adoption, but he never had time to take care of me. For a while, he hired nannies for me, but it turned out to be an unfortunate experience for him. One of them broke something, the other ignored that it was cold and wet outside, and I caught such a severe cold that I ended up in the hospital. The third simply disappeared without warning. All this caused unnecessary concern for my father, who was busy with much more serious things, his work. So at some point, when I was already four years old, he began to bring his work subordinate, Lorraine, to our house so she could look after me. And soon, he married her. Lorraine already had two children, Stella, two years older than me, and Bruce, my peer. I don't remember how Lorraine treated me before, but when she became the mistress of the house, she suddenly began to hate me. There was nothing personal about it. She probably would have hated any other child in her territory, and, and she did not limit herself. But before I tell you how it was, I will answer your possible question. Yes, my father did not notice what was happening in his family. He was fully consumed by his work. And once he had delegated caring about me to Lorraine, he stopped wasting his time and attention on his only child. I even think that he married her only to free himself from this responsibility. And I don't know. Lorraine probably knew it and hated me even more for it. Her hatred showed in every little thing. Every day, she always talked to me rudely and sharply, and she also knew how to talk to me so that I would start shivering from fear and begin to cry. If she touched me, she hurt me physically, and at the same time, she clearly showed how unpleasant and even disgusting it was for her. And she made me overeat. She made huge portions of tasteless and poorly prepared food especially for me, and made me eat everything. My bowl had to be clean. I will spare you the details. You just have to know that I was so afraid of Lorraine that I ate everything that was in the bowl, no matter how hard it was to pay for it in the bathroom later. How many of you are now asking why I didn't fight back? I'll answer. Just imagine from the age of five, you are subjected to constant psychological and physical abuse. So you simply don't know that life could be different. Yes, I saw that Lorraine treated her own children differently, but I was not her own child. Stella was copying her mother's attitude towards me. And Bruce? Bruce was the only one who was always kind to me. He tried to secretly give me his toys and sweets. Once, I was struggling with nausea, sitting over a huge bowl of undercooked porridge. I couldn't push it into my mouth anymore, and Lorraine and Stella looked at it, smiling. Then, Bruce burst into tears and shouted at his mother, Stop torturing Martha! I looked at him with horror. I understood that punishment was inevitable, and I was right. From that moment on, Lorraine became very cold with her son and soon sent him to study at a boarding school for boys. In the following years, I think she visited him several times a year, but of course, no one considered it necessary to tell me about it. Bruce's very name was some kind of taboo for me. I was left alone with my tormentors and an indifferent father. I always had thick, beautiful hair. And another painful ritual was connected with it for many years. When I was still a baby and Lorraine washed my hair, she turned this lovely, caring procedure into torture with pain and humiliation. And she continued to do this when I was already grown up enough to wash my hair myself. And even when I went through puberty. Yes, I was 13 years old, but Lorraine did not allow me to wash my hair myself because she was the only one who decided when to do it. So most of the time, my hair looked disgusting and greasy. 
My head was unbearably itchy. I couldn't stop scratching at it all the time, and of course, my classmates teased me. But I put up with all of this because washing my hair with Lorraine was much worse than suffering from an itch or being an object for jokes at school. And I didn't even begin to think to ask Lorraine to perform this torture more often. But one day, it was all over. Despite the lack of proper care, my hair was thick and it was long, while Stella's hair was weak and grew very poorly. When Stella was 16 years old, she wanted to enhance her hair, doing hair extensions, and she and her mother just cut mine off. They left it very, very short, badly and unevenly cut. And although now other kids tease me even more at school, I felt an incredible relief. Lorraine had lost all interest in washing my hair. Lorraine gradually lost interest in me completely as I got older. Now she preferred to ignore me. I don't know if it was because she understood that I was no longer an unrequited child and that I could strike back in response to her harassment and torture, but the fact is that now I could only complain about the coldness of my stepmother, if it occurred to me to complain to someone. The nightmare that was real in my past seemed to be more and more distant. Well, like a nightmare. And all I wanted was to completely forget about it. I planned to move away from this house as soon as I graduated from high school. I was sure that my father would be more than happy to get rid of me. He told me once, when we talked briefly, that I should not limit myself when choosing a college. I understood that this was ridiculous, but I literally chose a college on the other side of the country, and I wanted to go there long before classes began, but my departure was suddenly delayed. The college administration sent everybody a note that, due to repair work on the campus, they would not be able to welcome new students for another month. That's how it happened that I saw Bruce, who came home for the first time since Lorraine sent him to a private school. You probably already forgot that Lorraine had a son. I almost forgot about him over the years. But as soon as I saw him, so grown up and mature, I remembered everything in an instance. I didn't forget how he tried to protect me from his own mother, how he secretly brought me sweets and toys. I was so happy to see him. And Bruce seemed to be happy too. He rushed to hug me and said how lucky he was to see that I hadn't left yet because Lorraine wrote to him that by the time he arrived, I would have already left for college. At that moment, I looked up and saw that Lorraine was looking at us and she was furious. Now I understand, that day we had shaken the hornet's nest up. I don't know if Lorraine was seriously counting on Bruce's filial affection, but he hardly felt anything good about her. He only called her only by name and treated her with cold politeness. This created a striking contrast to his relationship with me. We spent almost all of our time together and hardly parted when it was necessary to go to sleep. If Lorraine thought that I would disappear and her son would come to her, she was mistaken. It even turned out that he had come to me. One evening, he told me that he had remembered me all these years and that now he knew for sure he loved me. It was time to go to bed, but this time we did not part until the morning. That night, we decided that we would get married. It was a beautiful morning, but Lorraine burst into our room and made a terrible scene. She yelled at me and I, I felt like I had become that little girl again who would only silently suffer and endure. But when Lorraine went in to grab and hit me, Bruce caught her hand. We're leaving tomorrow, Lorraine, he said very firmly and added forever. Lorraine silently left the room and Bruce hugged me and said that he had decided everything. We would leave and go study together. We thought that this would be our happy end, but it was not. Lorraine tried to convince my father to not pay for my college education. She accused me of so many terrible things. She told him that I was always a spoiled girl and that she and Stella suffered because of me and that she had to send Bruce to that school only to rid him of my bad influence and that now I had persuaded Bruce to get into an argument with her his own mother and to run away from home just to annoy her. 
I'm not sure whether my father didn't believe her or perhaps all this was just an unnecessary nuisance for him, but he attached no importance to her words and said that his daughter would get an education. It's a matter of prestige. And then Lorraine, she demanded that, in that case, he should not pay for Bruce's studies. I don't know. Maybe at that moment, my father finally realized what monster he had brought into his home many years ago. Bruce and I left and are now studying together. We are doing fine. There is a possibility that sooner or later, I will need the help of a psychologist because of everything I had to endure in my childhood. But for now, Bruce's healing love is more than enough for me. This Christmas, I received a short congratulations from my father and and probably I was glad about it. I don't want to hear anything about Lorraine and Stella, but if my father doesn't mind devoting some of his precious time to exchange Christmas cards with me, then I have nothing against it.